I'd call this meeting in order. Uh, any citizen comments? No. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Motion to adopt but add, add personnel to exec. All right. Uh, we've got a motion with an amendment by Mr. Smith. Uh, here a second. Second. Got a second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. Motion to adopt consent. All right. We've got a motion to adopt the consent agenda. Got here a second. Second. Got a second by Mr. Wolverine. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, all right, uh, Dr. Williams, we had a couple of events coming up. Yeah, I just want to uh, remind the board uh, that on Wednesday of this week, we're going to have the Gainesville High School Open House Community Pep Rally. At 6 o'clock will be just kind of a uh, self-guided tour through the high school campus. And at 7 o'clock, the recognitions of our athletic programs, Big Red Machine and others, will take place at 7 there at Bruce Miller Field. So instead of being at City Park, uh, we will actually have that at Gainesville High School campus, also using it as a way to let people uh, see the school and uh, walk around. And that flyer uh, started to get pushed out a good bit uh, today, uh, I believe. And then also, uh, we had a, a good article that's come out on Gainesville Times that's talking about all the construction that has been going on in <clears throat> Gainesville City uh, for the last three years now. And in that, it's also inviting people to come to the open house. Hopefully we get a good turnout uh, with that event. Uh, we also have school governance council training uh, at 6 p.m. at Gainesville High School. We will start off in the hub and then we will move uh, to kind of classrooms as far as breakouts per school. So board members, you're definitely invited to that. Uh, we'll be going over uh, our new charter system plan with the governance council and then we'll allow the schools to have their uh, first meeting uh, of the year. And the final item that once this week passes, we'll start to push it as well. Uh, the Butler High School renovation, Butler Center for us, uh, is complete. And we'll be uh, using that space in partnership with Hall County Family Connection, the Ninth District Opportunity. But we'll be having a ribbon cutting on Saturday, September the 16th from 10 to 1130. Uh, we're doing a little different. You know, most ribbon cuttings, uh, you don't go see the facility until you've done the full ribbon cutting. We're inviting everybody to show up at 10, check out the space for the first 30 minutes, and then we'll do the ribbon cutting and the, the program and the ribbon cutting together uh, starting at 1030. Uh, we do plan on having a pretty large group as far as uh, being involved in the picture. So we're going to turn the uh, ribbon cutting around to where anybody in the stands will be a part of that picture uh, because of many of the people that are coming uh, did attend uh, Butler High. And so this will be promoted uh, once we get through this week with the open house at the high school and the rally, uh, just so that we'll start to uh, promote our partnership with my district, Harold Daniel, and then uh, the services that will be coming uh, to the Butler Center. So I want to make you aware of those three items that are coming up here over the next week. Any questions of Dr. Williams on that? All right, next time, two items. Or, uh, Ms. Pebble? Good evening. A while back, I was asked to report um, some information for the board on earnings on the investments. And these are our cash investments. The majority of our earnings, of course, are earnings are acquired to Georgia Funding One. This information is as of June 30th, 2023, which is the end of our fiscal year. Um, the lowest yield month was July of 2022. We earned $16,808. The highest yield month was this past June of 2023. We earned $53,467 for this year. Our highest balance was during the month of March 2023. We earned $104,575. Our total earnings was $625,237. And we also incurred the uh, Monthly fee from Georgia Fund One, and that amount for the entire facility is eight thousand four hundred seventy-two. We also earned interest from our Avalon uh, remittances to the Gazelle, and that amount that we earned in twenty twenty-three was ninety thousand nine eighty-two. So that makes the total earnings uh, for the district and for the general fund at seven hundred sixteen thousand one eighty-five ninety-nine, and that is reported on your earnings and investment line. Revenue line on the first statement. And that's as of June. 
Any questions, Ms. Pepper, on that item? Thank you. Uh, next item is the preliminary uh, June period finance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have the preliminary, the first preliminary report for June. Um, our year to date revenues are at 87.7 million. Our year to date expenditures are at 92.5 million. Our ending food fund, bus, fund balance, excuse me, for June 30th is 19,804,000. Um, we are continuing to post um, the necessary items to the court and for the year end. So the majority of our expenditures and revenues have already been recorded in these numbers. We, we still are working uh, towards that closing date of September the 30th. But and we'll be bringing June, July, and August all together at the September meeting, uh, which is typical for us. We do have some more revenue that will be coming in. We anticipate being over $20 million in reserve uh, with this is all. Once it closed up. Very close to what we anticipated when we brought forward. I think when Ms. Pepper and I looked at it, it was about a $17,000 difference from the anticipated budget from a year ago. So we'll take that. Any questions, Ms. Pepper, on the financial statement? All right, thank you. Uh, next item is uh, Mrs. Collins to discuss the financial condition of the shop for scholars. Good evening. So um, we did have a meeting recently back in July in regards to the Shopping Scholars Fund. Um, you'll see who those committee members are that we met via Zoom on July 12th. Um, the original purpose of the Shockley Scholars Fund was to assist disadvantaged students and their families that attend Gainesville City Schools. That assistant in, um, back in that 2008 unit was to, it included things like field trips, curriculum books, brochures for parents, the Duke tip, uh, AP exams, Discover test program fees. We currently have a balance of about $29,610 with that la the last amount being um, um, to that account in 2000 that came in in December of 2022. Um, the high school, the last time we accessed this fund was in the 2011-2012 school year. And you can notice that we only took out anywhere from about $1,400 to $2,000 and it was for the AP exams then. The high school pays for AP exams. You know, they get state funding as well as they use their consolidated funds to pay for AP exams. So they are not accessing the fund for this. Um, elementary and middle school really hadn't accessed the fund either. So what we did is we looked at the original intent of the fund, um, and then we talked about what can we use these funds for. And so we said uh, things that are student-based funds, um, I mean student-based fees, um, such as field trips, when, when kids can't afford to pay for a field trip, um, or competitions, um, in elementary, it might be when they are having robotics competitions and they may have to go and stay overnight uh, for competitions out of state or, you know, in the state. And then if, if there are people that can't afford to pay for that, then, you know, be access for that. As well as any conferences that students are attending, not the staff, but student conferences. So the same thing with middle school. And then the high uh, middle school also, and this is middle school less specifically, they would like to access the funds to pay for things that they would put in their care closets for families, you know, be it food or clothing, that kind of that, those kinds of things. The high school, again, they would not really use it for AP exams, but they did talk about talk about using it for perhaps SAT, ACT, and AP prep ex um, materials for individual students. If there are some students who can't afford to buy those individual test prep kind of materials, then you know they would. Um, you know, use it for that, as well as possibly some college applications um, for any of the students that are applying for colleges and they don't have um, funds to help pay for some of those college applications. Um, of course, field trips, competitions, and conferences, especially with CTAE um, conferences and things like that, that, you know, students, especially if they're officers and they may not be able to, you know, to pay for like a hotel if they're, you know, going to a conference or something. So, those were the things that they would um, use it for. Now, in order to um, access this fund, they, these funds, they would have to complete an application or a grant request. Um, and then the, this committee that you saw earlier, we would be the ones that would say yay or nay, and then, then send that, turn that information over to Kathy, who would then reach out to um, 
the community foundation or community <laughs> to access the funds. So we would just make the request and then she would then, you know, then um, you know, reach out to them. This is the amount and what it's being used for, and then I have to do it. They would uh, write a check for what is what is needed. Any questions about the shopping scholars fund? Uh, it's okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Charles. Dr. Williams is signing a new agreement. He's all, he, he already because like, we needed to update the agreement, and so that is what's there that the new agreement is signed. Dr. Williams. All right. Uh, Dr. Williams. All right. Uh, now we're going to our action items. We're going to approve most the items one, two, and three. All right, we got a motion uh, by Mr. Smith to approve the items for one, small one, small two, small three. We hear a second. 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 Second by Dr. Ramsey. Any questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, for Mr. Niles, I believe you're going to give us a report on the additional parking lot. I thought he said one, two, three. Yeah, yeah under, under small i, which we just call it the second reading of the increase. No, oh, you meant small i would have said I have a positive one, two, three. I'm sorry, Mr. Now you got more work ahead of the city. <laughs> Truck and trailer. I thought, truck and trailer getting, I thought I was getting a break tonight. <laughs> no fence, no breaks. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> but you can't run through a fence because there's not one there. Right? I didn't pull apart. <laughs> That's why we didn't finish it. <laughs> yeah, we're holding on. Uh, our first request this evening is to purchase uh, 2024 uh, Isuzu pickup truck trailer combination. Uh, for fields. Uh, we currently uh, haul equipment, tractors, and uh, lawn equipment from one field to another. Uh, we do it now with a truck and trailer. This is a combo, so we can do it now with really just a one vehicle. Um, this purchase off a state contract uh, through uh, Gainesville Truck Center. Motion to approve. I have got a motion there, Mr. Smith. I hear a second. Yeah. We have a second by Mr. Mitchell. Any questions, comments? All those in favor? Mr. Carries. All right. Uh, the next item is to extend contract to Caravan's construction company uh, for the finished work at the existing three story building. Uh, it's an extension of contract and not a change order because the current contract with them. Uh, would have been a change order, it would have been for the new three store. All the subs and everything are the same. So this just extends their contract for this $262,919. It allowed us to use the painters that were on Correct. the Correct. The painters, plumbers, store yeah. instead of having to. It's an extension of all. the scope of that's right. Yes. That's right. Let's start using the letter designations. For each building, they're both three stories. They're both existing building C. So this is building C. That's a question. This is building C. Yes, that's okay. Right. Right. Let's, okay. Right. Let's start using the letter designation instead of all this frivolity stuff that you've got on here. You got it. Motion to approve. Uh, got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Got a second by Mr. Norrell. Any questions or comments? All those... Sammy, I believe you're going to have to keep reminding me which one's A, B, and C. Okay. <laughs> Left or right? Start. Yeah. Left start right. at start at Centennial. That's it. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Come on. <laughs> all right. We get a, all in favor. Motion right. nice carries. Uh, all right. Finally, the parking lot, Mr. Norrell. Yes. This is up the parking lot adjacent to the senior parking. Uh, Caravan construction four hundred eighty-seven thousand nine hundred thirty-eight dollars creates one hundred and nineteen parking spaces. Um, this allows them to go ahead, come in, get the parking lot done. We'll come back and do uh, some 
uh, stormwater uh, containment later, but this allows us to go ahead and get the, uh, the park going to the end. Motion to approve. All right, we have a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Dr. Ramsey. Any questions, Mr. Long? All those in favor? What's the timeline? Uh, once approved, they're ready to get started mobilizing next week. And Ms. Stewart, I did hear back from Mark. Uh, they're going to actually get started on Thursday. Okay. They're going to start there at Century Place. Uh, they're near the Sean Watson Way and come forward to front of the school. All right. Thank you, Mr. Niles. All right. Mrs. Collins. Well, Mrs. Jones is here. So I'm going to show Mrs. Jones from Mercy. Actually, we're taking notice of the agenda. All right. Do I have a book, uh, any discussion on uh, Two things, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number one, let's put on our radar they, to start promoting the veterans diplomas that we try to, once we get them in the pipeline, we try to coordinate with Veterans Day in November. So uh, we have, we haven't had any applicants in recent years, and but we should, but we should. So I'd like to get that in on the promotional. Secondly, uh, colleagues, Ms. Haltry wrote a grant application to the State Board of Education for Fair Street playground equipment. Uh, Fair Street is our smallest campus in England and has no playground on this line. It shares the campus, of course, with the Boston Mills playground. Uh, it's quite a trek. Cannot be used by the weather. Uh, so she has designed a new space and some uh, temporary equipment for an outdoor playground or just for Bear Street. It would be separated from the Boys and Girls Club equipment. School, school law, dedicated school law. She wrote a uh, grant application to the State Board of Education, which was approved. The only application submitted from our system and the only one from our region, uh, which was approved. Uh, my suggestion is, if there's no objection, is to ask the staff to examine a matching grant from us uh, for Fair Street Point Ramp, just as we have done matching grants at the notice of Tannehill, Moneyville, GEA uh, through recent years. Uh, they have added point ramp material. We have matched uh, school funds or grant funds or whatever. <coughs> so, uh, we ought to do that, of course. So, Dr. Williams, you want to get those numbers? And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get pull what we did for the other schools as well. Uh, yeah, we'll be able to compare them to this. That's good. Anything else, Mr. Schmidt? Or Fair Street Playground. Thank you. Mitchell, Dr. Randy, Chris. All right, uh, I hear a motion to uh, adjourn into executive session. So moved. Thank you. By Mr. Norrell, second by Mr. Schmidt. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone.